All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome. We're doing my cube sleeving stream. We're going through my entire cube. We're sleeving every card, talking about every card, hanging out, having fun. It's a Legacy Plus cube, super high power level, but no uh, no broken cards like Black Lotus or Channel, and um, super low mana curve. Must be a very competitive cube. More info in the first video with White, where I explain everything more better. If you're watching on YouTube, definitely go watch that if you missed it on the stream. Let's get in the green. Let's get in the green and. Uh, Green, green, green. I've not done lands yet. We need white, blue, black, and red. Our first card, Noble Hierarch. Easy game. Mana creatures is obviously very important in cube. Also a human. There's a human theme. Not really in, in green as much, but... Ben, good luck, my friend. That's awesome. We got Noble Hierarch. We have the new one, Ignoble Hierarch. So, mana creatures are very, very important. I think one of the important things about green in my cube, though, is that it's not just mana creatures. And, uh... I think one of the problems, sort of like red as the problem in cube, of being just the lightning bolt goblin guide color, people end up making green just the mana ramp color. So it's literally just all mana ramp creatures and big dumb things, and you just ramp. That's all, and that's all green can do. I think it's really, really important um, to have variety amongst each color. Your color should be able to do other things, you know? So there are a lot of ramp creatures in my cube, obviously. We're looking, looking at Lana War Elves. Uh, we have Avacyn's Pilgrim, you can also human for light human themes. And then we have a uh, tree speaker here, which is obviously insane. So there are plenty of mana creatures in my cube, but they're, uh, it's not just mana creatures that we'll see. So there's all your mana creatures. And then we have some beat down creatures as well. And I think that the, the beat down creatures are the ones that get removed the most from cube. Again, I keep saying this because they aren't supported properly. So we have Pell Collector, which is a, a very good beat down creature. You see in standard a lot, Pell Collector. We have Experiment 1, which is very similar to it, obviously. Which is kind of like this, this, the growing one drops. And we have uh, Hex Drinker, which is also very good. I just cut uh, Sky Shroud Elite, which is a, a really old card. It's like the mono green curd ape. I just cut it, unfortunately. I'm kind of sad about it. but So you have some beatdown creatures. And then we have a little utility as well. We've got Elvish Reclaimer, a card that I like a lot. A lot of lands in my cube. A lot of cool things this, this card can do. Uh, Field of the Dead, Bounce Lands, Creature Lands, Tabernacle. Uh, super cool card. Like this card a lot. Again, card is very endemic of my cube. It is a nuts and bolts synergy card. It's also decent on rate. Um, you know, Life Malone's in the cube. There's a lot of cool things you do with this card. Definitely like it a lot. Reclaimer uh, is very, very nice. So, moving on to our two drops. We're going to see a variety, kind of a spread here of different things. Um, you know, as far as synergy, mana ramp, uh, and so on and so forth. So our two walls, these have been in the cube for literally forever. We have Wall of Roots, which is a good defensive ramp card. There's still plenty of ramp in the cube. It is not the only thing that, that green can do. So Wall of Roots is obviously great. We have Wall Blossoms and uh, some Blink stuff going on in the cube as well. And just a fine just a fine blocker and so on and so forth. It's kind of cool. So we got Wall Blossoms. We got our kind of beat downy creatures here. We've got Tarmogoyf. Tarmagizzle. It's a proxy. Don't tell them. It's Tarmogoyf's obviously great. And then we have... I mean, Scavenging Ooze. It's got a beat down utility creature, you know? Nothing too crazy there. And then we have more of our synergy cards, right? So we have... I guess we'll, we'll do the ramp cards next. So we have Tribalder for ramp. Again, still plenty of ramp in the cube. Tribalder is obviously the best ramp growth effect uh, ever printed. So Tribalder's great. We got Lowe's Cobra. It's also pretty solid. Cool ramp effect. Cares about things too. So cares about any lands in the player, which is awesome. And uh, we have Raffle of Steel, Raffle Copter. One of the better cards in green if you're very, very heavy in green. And uh, very, very powerful ramp effect. So we got a lot of ramp stuff, right? But we got to do more than that. We got to do more than that, okay? The gold border card is from the uh, the World Championship decks. This was Brian Seldon's uh, survival deck. These are not legal in tournaments, but they're great for cubes. It's funny because they used to be really cheap. That's why I have them. But now, like, the gold border Gaius Cradle is like $100, which is, like, insane. But, like... I've had it in my cube forever. So then we have the synergy cards, right? So we have Seder Wayfinder. Uh, there's tons of graveyard stuff in black and green has some uh, some graveyard stuff as well. Wayfinder is just a great card. Again, once again, once again, once again, the whole point of my cube is cards like Seder Wayfinder. This is your perfect glue card. The kind of card that turns your deck from a pile of cards into a, a deck that wants to accomplish something. Seder Wayfinder wants to accomplish something. Some decks want it, some decks don't. And that's the big thing about the cube. Good cube design is making it so there are some decks that want cards, some decks that don't. So Wayfinder, great for that. Another great graveyard card for all my boomers out there is Hermit Druid. 
And uh, Hermit Druid's a really, really cool card. Two mana for a 1-1, one, one, because we're unfamiliar. You pay green. You can reveal cards in the top of your library until you reveal a basic land. The rest go in the graveyard. Now, once again, there's a ton of non-basics in my cube. So I had a deck on Sunday morning. On Sunday, not morning, but that was a green-black graveyard deck. I had about five basics. And I had Hogak. I had, uh, you know, Entomb. You know, Reanimate. And Hermit Druid was freaking awesome. Uh, just dumps like five cards in the graveyard at once and then gets you a land as well. So it's one green, draw a card, dump a whole bunch of cards in the graveyard. And this card is just incredible. Again, a card you'll never see in, in most cubes, especially not the Magic Online cubes, but a card that is super cool, super synergistic, really, really good in some decks. Uh, of course, not great in others. Uh, this card was, was played and extended back in the day because if you have uh, no basics in your deck, you can mill your entire deck. And then obviously if you mill your entire deck, you can win the game usually in extended or modern or whatever. Um, I don't think there's any ways to do that in my cube. But still a very, very powerful card. Super cool card. Super cool synergy card. That one's awesome. Then we have Fauna Shaman. Another uh, kind of graveyardy kind of card. You can tutor up blood gas and stuff. You know, the, the creature survival of the fittest. It's a bear also. Fine card. It's a cool cube card. There aren't really any like strict cre creature combos in my cube. But, um, you know, it's just cool stuff to get. Cool value card. I like it a lot. Going on to our three drops. We have Excavator. And uh, there are some land stuff going on in my cube. Exploration, Wasteland, Strip Mine, obviously. Uh, Ursa Saga is really cool. Um, it's a cool card. Cool card. Obviously, a bit of Nox with Strip Mine. But I think it's better than Crucible, Crucible is because it's just like in a creature, it's kind of cooler. It's more, more fun, more, more, more easy to kill, and then more uh, valuable on the board. So, kind of a cool, uh, cool landy card, which is great. We got Rex Age. Just got to kill artifacts and enchantments. Just, you know, the nature of a cube, which is fine. We have. The best card ever printed, and it's really cool because it makes artifact tokens. There's tons of artifact synergy in the cube. So, Tower Tracker is obviously great, and then, of course, it's just uh, the artifact stuff is a little bit of a bonus as well. So, definitely super cool. Tower Trackers is phenomenal. Then we got... That's it for threes, actually. Wow. How many threes? Moving on, moving on to, uh, to four, we have Oracle of Moldiah, and uh, I... One of my favorite cards. I played this card in a Pro Tour. I played... Uh, I played Jund in the Jund Pro Tour and it was in Standard. And I played no Broodmate Dragons, no Top End stuff. I just played three Oracles and eight Creature Lands. Four Raging Ravine, four Lava Claw Reaches, and like 30 lands in my deck. And uh, I love this card. You have a Lands theme is uh, is very, very real in my cube. There's a lot of cool land stuff. There's some Bounce Lands. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, no Corsair of Crufix. I think that Corsair of Crufix is a good example of a card that is better on rate and a card you want to just play in your deck on average. Whereas Oracle of Moldiah is a card you want to play in your deck when your deck cares about something. You don't want to play Oracle in any deck. You want to play it in your lands deck. Corsair can kind of go into everything. So Corsair is a higher floor card, but has a lower ceiling. I'd rather have more high ceiling, low floor cards in my cube. Because again, not every card should be wanted by every player. That that makes for a bad cube experience in my opinion. Galactic, new sub, what's your name? Where are you from? Thanks so much, appreciate it. So love Oracle, love the land decks in my cube. Super cool. Super, super cool. Questing Beast is here. Obviously, just a good card. Um, not, not every card is going to be a synergy card. Good beatdown card. Good curve stopper. You get the idea. Venge Vines in the cube. There are, there are a lot of graveyard things going on. And uh, it's a little hard to trigger, I think. You know, because the, the graveyard stuff is more concentrated in green. But it's a cool Builder on card. I can see this card getting cut after playing with it a lot and deciding it wasn't happening often enough. But I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Fun build around card. Cool graveyard card. A lot of graveyard things in my cube. So, I like that one a lot. We got the old Thrag Daddy here. Again, some good value. Also, you know, there's an Ephemerate in the cube. Restoration Angel, some Blink stuff too. But Thrag does mostly just a cool value card. The old Thrag Daddy. We got a new one here. Um, obviously not a new card. But a card that wasn't in my cube until Titania. Until Titania. Until it was in Modern Horizons 2. And I've been very impressed with this card. Super awesome card in like the Lanzi deck. Uh, this card's awesome. Super cool card. It's fine straight up with some fetch lands, but really, really good when you have like, you know, land synergy going on, maybe Urza Saga you return, whatever it is. Uh, just a super, super cool card. Like it a lot. Good synergy card. Good power level. Uh, love the old border. Just all about it. Just all about it. Uh, 
Domain, am I saying that right? From Miami. What's up, my friend? Awesome. Thanks so much. I really appreciate that. Very kind words. Aww. Join me Discord if you're a new sub. We got the old Hooting the Blowfish here. And uh, Delve is a very, very good cube mechanic because Delve cards are typically, you know, cards that have diminishing returns. Damien. Damien. I'm sorry, my friend. Thank you so much. Um, Delve cards have diminishing returns. You can't play too many Delve cards in your deck, you know? Uh, but in cube, there aren't that many Delve cards, so it's fine. So we got the old Hootie here. Um, again, black is more of the graveyard color, but obviously green kind of is too. So pretty powerful, pretty solid card. I like Hootie a lot. And again, it's all about efficiency. This is a very efficient card, a card you won't see in most cubes because they're more clunky and more interested in five drops. Um, this is often a one or two drop. I like it a lot. I like Hootie. We got Prime Time here. Love the old border again. And uh, Prime Time's got a lot of cool lands to get. This is a lot of awesome lands in the cube. Um, the lands deck is very real in my cube. I've drafted it multiple times. Uh, there's no Dark Depths in the Thespian stage, so I want to ask that. That's too, uh, too parasitic for me, I think, uh, where they're only good with each other, but a lot of cool stuff to get. Field of the Dead was perfect for the lands because you couldn't have Valakit, but love Prime Time. And then our one big, uh, or sorry, we have two big green fatties here in uh, Avenger of Zendikar, which is kind of like your big ramp payoff. Honestly, a fine card to sneak attack uh, as well, or reanimate, just a really, really powerful card. Love me some Avengers Endicar. Good, good, good land theme also. And then Nasty Terasty is uh, you're kind of like your green reanimation target. Obviously can be castable, but usually more of a reanimation card. You know, every color is like maybe one reanimation-y kind of card. Uh, there aren't a ton of them. So you gotta, it's not like the Vintage Cube where you get a million of them. You gotta pick the one you want, but there's Nasty Terasty. So moving on to our green spells. We're gonna see a lot of variety in the green spells. Start off with a new card here in Abundant Harvest. And again, You'll notice my cube has a lot of cantrips, a lot of cheap cards. That's what makes constructed decks constructed decks. You know, constructed decks aren't just a bunch of five mana planeswalkers. Um, so Harvest is a super, super cool new card and uh, it's cheap, puts cards to the graveyard, helps find what you need. It's the green ponder basically, you know, super solid card. I like it a lot. And um, again, not everything in green cares about spells. There aren't really any prowess cards in green, but maybe you're red green. And you're a red-green aggro with some prowess stuff going on. Uh, just a great card. Just a great card. Ancient Storings is here. Ancient Storings is another card that you won't often see in other cubes. Uh, huge artifact component in my cube. Huge land component in my cube. Uh, a lot of colorless cards. And another card, same idea. You know, it's a glue card. Cog in the machine. Makes your deck more consistent. Um, just great. Just a great card. You know, very powerful. Tons of artifacts in my cube. Finding lands is important too. Uh, again, it's about your deck operating. You build a deck, it does what it wants to do, and you operate. And Storings helps, helps do that. We got Blossoming Defense. I wanted to have one pump spell in the cube. Um, I think it's important to have like at least one of each effect. If you know there's no, um, if you know there's no pump spell in the entire cube, then that takes away an element of the cube where like you just all right, I'll block, I'll always block. You know, so I wanted to have at least one. I think Blossoming Defense is the best one. Um, you know, it's good in aggro decks, obviously, as well. Good for spell stuff. I know I keep saying prowess stuff, but it's not just prowess. You know, a card like Stirrings or Abundant Harvest, these kind of cards in Constructed just do the same stuff, where there are triggers for prowess stuff, but they're also just like, fill the graveyard, find your stuff, draw cards, etc., etc. You know, so that's why they're so good in Constructed, so. Scale Up isn't really a, isn't really a pump spell. And Berserk isn't really a... I mean, Berserk is kind of cool, actually. I mean, I have Team of Battle Rage. I think that um, Battle Rage is in a better color than Berserk because there's more stuff in red that cares about like prowess and things like that or pumping. But yeah, I think defense is better. I think defense is better, 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 better than Snakes can be able to because it's, it's, it's a better pump spell. But yeah, so Blossom Defense is the one pump spell in the cube. So and again, the, the point is if you want to have aggro decks in your cube, you got to support them. The Magic Online cube never supports their aggro decks. So people are like, aggro is terrible. It's not as long as you support it. So. So I like a uh, defense. I actually don't like the the berserking your opponent's creatures. That feels kind of like not not fun to me. So competition here again, pretty strong land theme in green. Um, go find your tabernacle, your your maze of Ith, your bounce land, whatever you want. Just solid tutor effect, cheap, efficient. We got fast bond here, and fast bond is a kind of card that is absurdly powerful, but it's also fairly difficult to use. Um, people draft this card a lot in like vintage cube. They play it on turn one, they play two extra lands, and then it sits there for the rest of the game and does nothing. Looks clean. Is it like... 
He's not, not that clean. Um, but so Fast Bond is super, super awesome card if you use it right. And there's, uh, you know, there's, um, you know, obviously the Time Twister and Wheel of Fortune, stuff like that in the cube. And there's extra land effects, you know, and so on and so forth. So very cool card, very powerful card. But I, what I like about it is it's hard to use. It's not easy to use. It's not like channel where you're just like, ha ha ha, channel, card on turn one, ha ha ha. You know, so love Fast Bond. Very, very powerful. Kind of the quintessential, like, this card is broken, but it requires work, so it's okay in my cube kind of card. No mana drain, too easy. No channel, too easy. Fast Bond, sure. All about it. All about it. I don't own Tabernacle, no, it's proxy. Rancor, again, another aggro card. You gotta push your aggro stuff. Your aggro just gotta push through. Rancor is a great aggro card. Um, solid card. There is Storm, yes. Again, you can type in exclamation point, Gym Cube for the uh, cube list. Go check on YouTube, it'll be in the description. So, it's a good aggro card. It's cheap, powerful, it's great. Explorers are other ramp spells. There's Tribelder in the creatures and Explore in the lands. And <clears throat> again, with the uh, with the land theme, Explorer is pretty great. And uh, I have some bounce lands also. We'll get to that. When's this cube on Magic Online? I already got to ask Wizards. It's a, it's a bucket list item. I'd love to get there. But so we got Explore. Explore is great. Life from the Loam. Now, this is another really, really cool synergy card. Um, I, had a, I had a really cool Loam deck somewhat recently. I think it was in my graveyard deck, honestly. My Black Green Graveyard deck. And Loam is awesome. Get back your lands. You can just play them, obviously. Go with Fast Bond and Explore effects so you can keep playing lands. Um, to go with your great way, your discarding effects, you can keep discarding to get other effects. Uh, there's cycling lands in the cube, which is a very flexible, very powerful card. You can tune for it. A lot of stuff. Again, a great, great cog in the machine kind of card. Not everyone wants this card. The decks that want it are going to use it really, really well. Uh, love Loam. Love it. Moments Peace. Another card. Not every deck wants this card, but if you're a combo deck or a ramp deck trying to buy a little bit of time, Moments Peace is your card. All right, let me tell you, this card was played a ton back in the day and extended in modern, well, not modern, but in extended um, for combo decks looking to buy that one or two turns. It's so often double time walk to the point where I used to play Flaring Pain in my Goblin sideboards. That's how good this card was in uh, extended back in the day. So, um, cool card. Again, not a card everyone wants, but super cool. Great art too. Yeah, the art card is super, super cool. So Moments Piece, super fun card. And again, you kind of really get the idea of, you don't want every card. Why do my thing stop? Why'd you stop? Keep, keep scrolling. Don't stop scrolling. Don't stop scrolling. What's up, Galactic? Uh, we've done white, blue, black, and red. Now we're doing green. Anything you miss will be up on YouTube, right? So that's Moments Peace. Next up is Oath of Druids. And an extremely powerful card. You know, this is sort of on that Tinker edge where Tinker's in the cube also. The best Oath deck is probably almost unbeatable. But it is very hard to construct. Therefore, it's okay in my cube. Uh, Oath is busted. It is very hard to use. You need to draft a deck that has almost no creatures, except for the one or two that you want, and uh, your deck has to function also. But when you get it, it's really, 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 really good, obviously. So, very powerful card, great build around. Um, again, a little on the edge. A little on the edge to the point where it can be almost a little too good sometimes, but I believe it's hard enough to assemble that I'm okay with it. So, Oath the Druids, super, super awesome. Love it. Once upon a time... Uh, it's a broken Eldrain card, and so it goes in the cube. I don't know what to tell you. It's good in basically everything. Card's great. Regrowth. I recently cut Eternal Witness because it just sucks. But Regrowth still gets to stay in the deck because in the, in the cube because it's good in combo decks. Uh, it's a cheap, efficient way to return your cards for combo decks. You can, like, you know, cantrip, 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 brain freeze, regrowth, brain freeze. You know, something like that if you have a lot of mana. Um, again, not the most powerful card. I think this card's legal and modern. Nobody plays it. But... It's um, it's a good combo card. It's a good combo card. Not good for much else, but it's all right. Witness is just too bad. It's just clunky. The body's terrible. It's just an awful card. Survival of the fittest. Of course, this is Brian Selden in the uh, the World Champs deck. Super cool. And uh, it's cool because the when I first built my cube, I had the Brian Selden Survival deck, and it's just one of every good creature. So like. Oh, Necrotal, Mana War, perfect. It was perfect for my cube. So, your stunned once upon a time is in the cube seems way too good. I mean, it just gets a land or a creature. Like, it's, yeah, it's very, very good, but just makes your deck a little more efficient, you know? It's not like it's like the end of the world, so. So, uh, so yeah, Survival, 
Super great card. Super great build around. Obviously cool recurring nightmare, but she's good in general. So, Wild Mongrel? Nah, that card hurts. That card's way too old. I'm not good enough. We got Sylvan Library. Obviously a very, very powerful card. I didn't I didn't mark her this card. It was like that when I got it. So, it's in the cube. Sylvan Library is obviously great. Super good card. We got Harpy of Spring. And uh, this is the one uh, mana flare effect in the cube. And it's a big part of combo decks, honestly. Um, we have Garrick to untap lands. You know, fr uh, Frantic Search and stuff like that to untap lands. Time Spiral. So, the combo decks in my cube are often... A mixture of colors that's not white. You can have a blue blue black combo deck, and blue green combo deck, you have a blue black green combo deck, you know, other stuff like that. So um Harpy Spring is a risky card, it's a fun build around, it's a powerful card. You don't just jam this card. You gotta want to you gotta want this card a lot. But combo payoffs are um the storm cards, obviously just like you know, make a dramatic casting ever cool or whatever. Uh you'll see more, you'll see more. So that's Harpy to Spring. Then we got with the company. Again, the curve in my cube is very, very low. And I have a good amount of creatures, so company is very, very live. Again, the kind of card's a fun build around, but like, you don't really need to work too hard to build a good company deck in my cube, because 85 to 90 percent of all the creatures cost three or less, because my curve is so low. And again, that's I keep saying it over and over again, but it's probably the most important factor in my cube is that the curve is so low. Um, the average CMC of my cube has to be half what your average Magic Online cube is. So. That makes cards like Company great. Obviously, a really good card. We got Eureka. And uh, kind of a trap card a little bit, but can be very, very good. A little harder to make work than Show and Tell is. But it's not a trap card like it is in Vintage Cube. Because in Vintage Cube, there's 17 Eldrazi, and everyone's playing a big, dumb, stupid deck. My cube's not like that. So Eureka's a lot better than it is in a in a in the, in the Vintage Cube. Fun, fun build around. Fun, uh... Fun, uh, fun combo card. It's fun. It's a cool card, too. Just fun to say. Eureka! Eureka. There are two Planeswalkers in green. Again, there's, usually, there's only one in, uh, I guess there's two in most colors now, but... First one is the original Garrick Wildspeaker. Now, Garrick is not the best green Planeswalker ever printed, but it is a very, very solid Planeswalker. And it's also partly here for the combo decks, for the land decks, it untaps two lands. So the Heartbeat Spring and Play makes four mana, um, untaps bounce lands, and so on and so forth. And just good. Garrick's just very, very solid. It's a very, very solid Planeswalker. Um, just a classic. Just a classic. But it is partly here as a combo enabler, as well as just a good Planeswalker threat. That is partly why uh, why Garrick's in there. So, uh, I like Garrick. Garrick's cool. Harmonize is here. Nothing really great. Harmonize is whatever, honestly. I can, see, I can see this card not even being in the cube, but it's fine. It's like fine card draw. Just is what it is. Nothing too fancy. Our second green planeswalker is one that you may uh, know from standard. And uh What? It's it's not standard though. It's okay. It's okay. Nissa who shakes the world is unbelievable. Uh, have you played it in a few cubes? Nissa just does everything. And again, sort of like Garrick, Nissa's kind of a combo enabler. Where you uh you um can just double your mana, obviously. It's Mirari's Wake. So you have Forest in play. So you're going to combo and make a bunch of mana, untap your land, make a bunch of mana, and play your whatever it is. You know, play your Time Spiral or your Emrakul or whatever it is. It's a cool ramp card, cool combo card. It's obviously a great threat in and of itself. It'll play very well in blue decks. You can untap like a Breeding Pool and have mana leak up or stuff like that. It's just too powerful not to, not to include. Um, you know, and again, my cube is meant to be a Synergy cube, but it's also just a really powerful competitive cube. And the goal is to build really, really good, powerful competitive decks. And... Uh, this is just really, really good. This is just really, really good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. We got a favor coming here, folks. Five mana card that makes Jim really happy. Can uh, can chat make any guesses? YouTube folks, your comment of the day is to try and guess what this card is. Five mana card that makes Jim really, really happy. Thanks for following, Lazy Boy. If you haven't followed, hit that follow button. Of course, on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. What is the five mana card? Yoshi Man got it. Plow Under. God, I love me some Plow Under. Let's go. Let's go. Plow Under. Again, very, very important for decks to have good disruption. And Plow Under is it. You know, so Black has um, Nether Void. White's got Armageddon. You know, Red's got um, Ravenous Baboons. Well, Green's got Plow Under. And Plow Under is the nut. The nut. I love Plow Under. That's all I have to say about Plow Under. I freaking love it. Double Time Walk. 
Next up's a weird one. Uh, we have Rude Awakening. Now, this card looks like a relic from days long past. Um, this card was played in Standard and Block Constructed as a win condition, where the deck would just play really slow and play really slow, and then entwine it and attack for 18 and kill your opponent. Not really the plan here. Rude Awakening in my cube is essentially meant to be an early harvest. Uh, it's a thing to untap your lands. So, you have a Heartbeat of Spring in play, you've got Bounce Lands in play, you got a bunch of lands in play, and you need to go off for your turn, use Rude Awakening. Um, it can also be entwined, you know, just to kill your opponent. That's fine. For like a, a land back, that's fine too. But the primary purpose here is to untap your lands. Um, this is a card that could probably be cut from the cube. It's kind of, it's definitely a card that's on the edge. But I just really want to make sure the combo decks have the, the ritual effect that it gives. Exactly. It's a ritual. Um, you know, Black's got Cabal Ritual. Green's got Rude Awakening. So it's a little bit of an enabler. I mean, I played it uh, in my last deck on Sunday. I was a teamer combo deck. Um, and I played Rude Awakening in my deck. You know, I, I had Thousand Year Storm, untapping my lands, floating mana. So it's certainly a playable card. It's Turnabout, right? You know, and Turnabout, the problem is that the blue the blue section is so stuffed that Turnabout's a little hard to play. And typically you want that effect with Heartbeat of Spring anyway. So putting it in green makes more sense too. So that's one of Rude Awakening. Again, a card that will go last sometimes, but as I've said a million times already, um, I think that having cards that will get last picked because no one wants them in that particular draft is a feature, not a bug. And our last green card is Green Sun Zenith, and uh, it's a very solid card. Very solid card. A little bit of flexibility. You can go find your creature that you want to get. Um, fine on rate. There is no Dryad Arbor in the cube. Uh, I've considered it, but it's only really good with Zenith. So that's green, folks. Green is all done and ready to rock and roll. And uh, again, a lot of ramp stuff, but a lot of other stuff too. We're just going to like a land theme. There's a graveyard theme. Um, there's some combo stuff going on too. So not strict themes like we see um, often now where there's always a, a signpost uncommon where the blue-white card cares about blinking and the green-white card cares about plus one, plus one counters. Not as rigid as that, but still you see overarching themes through each colors and so on and so forth. So that's green. And we're going to keep rolling along here. Up next will be the multicolored section. Um, but YouTube folks, next video. Like, comment, subscribe. I love you all. Thanks, YouTube. Appreciate it.